My name is Lakshmi. I'm a journalist. Now, the second question is, Muslim men are allowed to marry four or five times, I think, and they don't uh, require their wife's permission, you know, the first wife's permission to marry, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, to marry more number of times. So I actually don't see any logic in this because I believe uh, it's one man, one woman, that's the institution of marriage. So please clarify. Thank you. Now coming to your second question. In Islam, men marry four times, five times, and they don't ask permission from the first five. Why? As far as polygyny is concerned, a man having more than one wife, Islam is the only religion, and Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth which says marry only one. There is no religious scripture besides the Quran. I'm a student of comparative religion, which says marry only one. There's no verse in the Bible, no verse in the Bhagavad Gita, no verse in the Veda which says marry only one except the Quran. If you read the Hindu scriptures in Ramayana, the father of Sri Ram, how many wives did he have? How many wives? More than one. More than one. Three wives. <laughs> Fine. Sri Krishna, according to Mahabharat, how many wives he had? Unlimited. <laughs> Not unlimited. Do you know your scripture well? No. Did he have four wives? No. I have no idea. Not four. Not 100, not 1,000, 16,108 wives. How many wives they had? 16,108. So why can't we Muslims have four? What's the problem? When she Krishna can have 16,108 wives, why can't we have four? Further, if you read the Vishnu Purana, chapter number 24, verse number one, it says a Brahmin can have up to four wives. If you read the Jewish scriptures, it gives you permission to have as many wives as you wish. If you read the Christian Bible, it gives you permission to have as many wives as you wish. If you read the Bible, Abraham had three wives. Solomon, how many wives he had? He had 700 wives. It is later on, the church has put a ban that Christians should marry only one, not the Bible. It is the Jewish community married more than one wife, it was in 1950 that chief rabbi, pastor Sinoid, that Jews should marry only one. So it is the rabbi, not the Jewish scriptures. And according to Hindu scriptures, you can marry as many as you wish. It is the Indian government in 1954 passed a law called the Hindu Special Marriage Act. Hindu Special Marriage Act which says Hindu should marry only one. It is not the religious scripture. It is not Bhagavad Gita. It is not Ramayana. It is not Mahabharat. It is not Veda. It is the Indian Penal Code. The Indian government, which has passed a law in 1954 that Hindus should marry only one. But according to the statistics of the status of the women in Islam, if you read the government documents on page number 6667, it says that Muslims do polygamous marriages. You know what is the percentage in India? 4.3%. How much? In India, 4.3% of the Muslim men do polygamous marriages. A statistic between 1951 to 1961. Hindus, how many? 5.06. 0.7% more than the Muslims in India. According to the Indian government, even though it is prohibited according to the Indian law, yet they do more polygamous marriages than the, than the Muslims. Why? Now, let's analyze what does the Quran say. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 3, marry women of your choice in twos, threes, or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. This statement, marry only one, is only given in the Quran and no other religious scripture. It says, marry women of your choice in twos, threes, or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. So if you want to marry more than one woman, one of the criteria of the Quran is you should do justice. If you can't do justice, you should marry only one. Now, what are the reasons, logical reasons a person can think that why has Islam permitted certain men 
to have more than one wife. Many non-Muslims think it is fard, it is compulsory for a Muslim man to have more than one woman, to have more than one wife. It's not compulsory, it's optional. It's not fard, it's not compulsory. How many Muslim men do you know who have more than one wife? How many do you know, sister? How many do you know? A few. How many? A few, again. Few means one, two, three, how many? Yeah, at least about three. Oh, about three. Have you heard of Dharminder? Yeah. How many wives he has? Two. Muslim or non-Muslim? Non-Muslim. Non-Muslim. Your previous chief minister, what's the name? Jai Lalita. Yes. Hindu or Muslim? Hindu or Muslim? Hindu. Hindu, fine. Now, these are famous personalities. Fine. How many famous personalities you know in India who have got more than one wife? The three you know may be locality, fine? Yeah. Local, maybe friend in your neighborhood, maybe your colleague. In India, there are more non-Muslims having more than one wife than the Muslims. Now, let us understand what are the logical reasons. Come back to logic now. Now, by nature, if you ask any medical doctor, he will tell you, male and female are born in equal proportion. Girls and boys are born in equal proportion. But any medical doctor, any pediatrician, any children doctor will tell you that the female sex, the female child is stronger than the male child. That's the reason there are more deaths in the male children as compared to female children. So in children's age itself, the female children are much more than the male children. As life grows on, there are people dying due to accidents, due to alcoholism, due to war. There are more males dying as compared to females. Today, if you analyze in the world, there are more females in the world as compared to males. There are few third world countries like India where the male population is more than the female population. And do you know why? The reason is because of female feticide and female infanticide. According to an article, a program which came on BBC by the name Let Her Die, the program was assignment. There was a British reporter by the name of Emily Beckinen. She comes to India and she says that every year in India, more than one million fetuses are being aborted after they identified that they're females. She says more than 3,000 every day. You multiply more than a million every year. According to the Tamil Nadu government hospital report, she gives the statistics, out of 10 female born alive, do you know how many are put to death? Four. Sister, did you know that? Tamil Nadu, your state, your beloved state, according to the government statistics, out of 10 females born alive in the government hospital, four are put to death. There are billboards put in Rajasthan and here, which says, that spend 500 rupees and save 500,000 rupees. You know what does it indicate? Spend 500 rupees, do ultrasonography, do amnio sentences, identify the child you're carrying as a female, abort her, and save 5 lakh rupees, 500,000 rupees. Maybe a couple of hundred thousand are bringing her and the remaining 100,000 in dowry. If you stop this evil practice in India, our beloved country, Stop the female infanticide. Stop the female feticide. Even in India, the population of female will be more than the male population. If you see the rest of the world, if you see New York alone, there are 1 million females more than males. In USA alone, there are 7.8 million females more than males. In UK alone, there are 4 million females more than males. In Germany alone, there are 5 million females more than males. In Russia alone, there are 9 million females more than males. And God alone knows how many millions of females are more than males throughout the world? Suppose I agree with your philosophy, sister, you said, one man, one woman. If I agree with you, sister, with your philosophy, one man, one woman. And suppose my sister happens to be in America, or your sister happens to live in America. And suppose the market is saturated. One man, one woman, saturated. Yet there will be 7.8 million females who will not find life partners. One man, one woman. Now the option for these 7.8 million females is either marry a man 
who already has a wife or become public property. You say, Dr. Zakir Naik, public property, such a harsh word. Sister, it is the most sophisticated word I can use. I cannot use a more sophisticated word than public property. According to the statistics of America, do you know, on an average, a man, before he settles down with a wife, he has eight different sexual partners. Do you know that? On average, eight. Some may have one, some may have ten, some may have twenty-eight sexual partners before he settles down with one. So the only option remaining, so if my sister happens to live in America, or if your sister happens to live in America, and the option is given to her, and suppose the market is saturated, every man has found a woman for himself. And unfortunately, if my sister, or if your sister happens to be one of the women who has not found a life partner, the only option for them is either marry a man who already has a wife, or become public property. Any modest woman would opt for the first. Sister, what would you opt for your sister? Marrying a man who already has a wife or become public property? My sister is too young to be married. So. When she grows up and if she happens to go to America, or if you happen to be in America. Third choice. What would you prefer for her? You're the elder sister. Would you prefer her becoming public property or marry a man who already has a wife and get equal rights? In Islam, if you have a second wife, you give equal rights. In America, the public property has got no rights. She's degraded. She's dishonored. In Islam, she has an equal right. She gets honor. What would you prefer for a younger sister when she grows up? Sometimes it's difficult to speak the truth, sister, correct? Right? Especially in front of such a large audience. Anyway, I've got your answer, sister. Thank you. And your silence speaks for that. So that's the reason in Islam, sister, men have been allowed to marry more than one wife is to protect the woman, not to degrade her. Regarding a question, is it compulsory that the husband should take the permission of the wife? It's not compulsory because if she wants to protect, if that man wants to protect another woman, a normal woman, I agree with you, sister, no woman under normal circumstances would like to share the husband. We have to agree. This is human nature. But... If the woman is a good Muslim, is a good Muslim woman, what she says, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. She will say, I know sharing my husband is a loss for me, but I would prefer letting a small loss take place for me to prevent my sister becoming public property. She's a good human being. So she would surely give permission to the husband to marry a second woman if she's a good Muslim woman. But taking permission is not fard, it is preferable. But at least informing is a requirement so that he does justice between the two wives. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you.